Hello my beautiful YouTube friends. Today I bring you part 6 of Year in Review, my favorite books of 2013. I know that a lot of people have been doing the top 13 of 2013, but I ended up having more than 13 books on my list. Now they are listed chronologically as to how I ended up reading them throughout this year, and they are ones that I have read for the first time. So any that I reread and thoroughly enjoyed yet again, I didn't include in this list as they were favorites from previous years. Also, I am going to explain to you why each of these books ended up on my list of favorite books. I hope that you guys have had a thoroughly enjoyable year, and I hope you look forward to the unexpected surprises throughout the year of 2014. I know I am. I'm also a little scared to see what comes, but it's very exciting. I'm going to get into the books now. The first book on my list is Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Rawls. I chose this because of the amazing character of Billy. His growth and development from the start of the story is easily recognizable throughout the rest of the story, right up to the end, and I thoroughly enjoyed seeing his change and development. The second book on my list is A Study in Scarlet by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I chose A Study in Scarlet not because of the brilliance of Sherlock Holmes and that he is introduced in this, but because of the amazing writing. Sir so Arthur Conan Doyle had this way of writing a mystery story and having it conclude just the same as every other story, except then he ends up giving you the backstory of this killer to the point that you feel sympathetic towards him and you feel sorry for him and you side with him. And I don't think I've ever seen another author do that before. The third book on my list is The Dark Unwinding by Sharon Cameron. Now this one ended up on my list because of the way that Sharon Cameron wrote this story. I didn't know where we were going with any of this, what was taking place. I was very confused through some of it, and I thoroughly enjoyed this book. This was actually the author's debut novel, and it was absolutely amazing. This one is really well done with the characters and the mystery, and just leaving you with a sense of, I need to keep reading because I need to find out what's going on in here, and I really enjoyed that. The fourth book on my list is Be a Genie in Six Easy Steps by Linda Chapman and Steve Cole. Now I really enjoyed the uniqueness and quirkiness of this story. I thought it was really ingenious and it just was extremely fun to read. Not only do you have the story with the four kids learning how to become a genie, but you also have each one of the steps to become a genie in the book. And I really enjoyed that. It gave it such a unique feeling. The fifth book on my list is The Year of Secret Assignments by Jacqueline Moriarty. The characters were extremely fun to read, well, some of them, and I really enjoyed getting to see how the letters kind of progressed into more of the story. Aside from that fact, I just really connected with one of the characters who seemed more protective of the others. Number six on my list is The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Now, I chose this one based on the fact that brilliance is the only word that comes to mind with this story. And it really makes you realize you need to enjoy every moment in the moment, and you need to just know that the next moment is going to be completely different from the one you've just lived. And I really enjoyed that about this. Number seven on my list is Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk. Now the reason why I chose this has nothing to do with the fact that the main character and some of the other characters can read characters out of a book. It has to do with the fact that your imagination takes you wherever a book goes. And I really enjoyed that with this. The eighth book on my list is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is on my list because of the brilliance of the characters. F. Scott Fitzgerald had this way of creating 
each character with a different voice and different personality and really showing their worst side, yet making you like them. Number nine on my list is Sapphire Blue by Kirsten Gear. This one ended up on my list because I couldn't help but grin my whole way through this book. It is lovely. It is lovely, you guys. Definitely one of my favorites. Number 10 on my list is The Hollow Kingdom by Claire B. Dunkel. You guys, if you haven't read this book yet, what are you doing with your life? I know that there are books that are being published every single day, but honestly, books that were written maybe a year or two ago or more, when was this actually written? I should check that when talking about this. Oh, <laughs> um, 10 years ago, sorry. This was written 10 years ago. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Just Merrick. That's all I have to say. Merrick. Oh, the feels. Number 11 on my list is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. I love how Lewis Carroll took this Wonderland and turned it into this mad world, which kind of resembles the real world in a child's eye. A lot of children don't understand why older people do certain things, and older people don't understand why children don't understand certain things, at least some adults. And I really enjoyed the fact that Lewis Carroll took the world of Wonderland and turned it into this upside down, right side up kind of world, and it was just lovely. It was lovely. Number 12 on my list is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. This one ended up on my list because of the very unique original writing. I don't think I've ever read something as well written as this. Number 13 on my list is A Bride Must Be Grudging by Deanne Gist, and this ended up on the list because of the absolutely amazing, historical, accurate writing. I just, I loved it. Number 14 on my list is Malice by Chris Wooding, and this has nothing to do with the fact that the setting of the story is really creepy and extremely well built. It actually has more to do with the fact that it felt like I was watching a cartoon or a half live action, half cartoon kind of film in my mind as I read this. You see, it is part novel part comic. I love it. So well done, you guys. So well done. Number 15 on my list is Emerald Green by Kirsten Gear. This is the end to the Ruby Red trilogy, and oh my word, Zamarius. Zamarius is amazing, and the whole way that the author wrote the series. This one actually came in more due to the fact that the author really interwove everything extremely well. I love when authors are very thoughtful of their writing. I love how they write very accurately, and I love when they pay attention to details. That is what this series is about, and that's why it is so amazing. It's very addictive as well. I kind of want to read it again now. Number 16 on my list is The Ballad of Mulan by Sang Nan Zing. This is very well done, you guys, and it's not even just the amazing artwork, but I love the artwork in this picture book. It's very, very beautiful. It's very traditional. I just, I loved it. And I really enjoyed the traditional ballad. Mulan is an amazingly strong female heroine. Now, here are the three that I didn't end up reviewing yet, but I will come the new year. Divergent by Veronica Roth. Oh my word. Oh my word, you guys. Oh my word. The writing, amazing. The grammar and spelling and punctuation, beautiful. Oh, just loved it. Um, the story, quite dark. I like that. I actually preferred this to The Hunger Games. Um, 
wow, it was just brilliant in a book. <sighs> I don't really know what else to say yet. I haven't really been able to gather my thoughts yet. Number 18 on my list is A Calm Before Storm by Richard Castle. First off, the artwork in this, I loved it. I loved it. It was beautiful. And second off, I really loved how the story was more personal. I don't know what it is with me, but I love reading stories more mystery or crime based when they are more personalized to the characters and they're not just an objective observer. And book number 19, the last book on my list, is The School for Good and Evil by Soman Chinani. Now this story is brilliant in a book yet again. I loved the characters, the story was original, and it completely played out in my head like a animated feature film or or an anime the cover kind of makes me think anime more and I just oh my word this was brilliant this was brilliant you guys go read it go read it all right I know that I said a lot of words such as brilliant for some of the books but that is what they are they ended up on this list because they are brilliant books now, if you guys want to let me know down below if some of these were some of your favorite books this year or if you have different favorite books this year, let me know and I will see you guys in a year. Go and pick up a random book and read. Happy New Year, guys!